That's my boyfriend's always saying to me. And do you know what I was thinking of doing first? I was thinking of doing a little number to warm you up. But I have to say, there's great heat coming off you already. Yeah. Do you know something? You could fry an egg on you. If you had an egg. We are delighted to, uh, to welcome Anne Gildy. Thank you for having me. Uh, and you are bringing a show next month here called How to Get to the Menopause and Enjoy It. I am indeed. Uh, this, is the, this is the voice of the like, menopause being enjoyed. Uh, sounds like a serious topic. <laughs> it is. Um, it's informative and then it's ha 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 ha. Uh, you know, it goes along obviously. The way. Yeah, lots of jokes along the way. I started writing it during lockdown and it's subsequently menopause has become the word du jour because, of course, Davina McCall did mm. her uh, documentary about it. And then there's been a few documentaries in Ireland and everybody's talking about it now and every organization has to have their menopause policy and what have you. So it was very serendipitous. And it was actually my partner, Paul Farron, who came up with the idea of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and he's... <laughs> As Paul says, behind every great woman is a fair to middling man. When Paul said to me, he just wrote that title on my whiteboard, How to Get the Menopause and Enjoy It, that's your show. I was trying to write a new show during lockdown because I used to have this comedy act called The New List. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And the, yeah, the lyric brilliant. theater, we played a month in the lyric about yeah. 20 years and ago. And you played here as well, but... Did we? In the oh, old we building. did. That's what yeah. we recorded our BBC Radio Four. Yeah, no, it was two packed, of our. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, and so that we'd come off the road, and so I had to write a new show, and I was trying to write it around midlife, and then Paul said, you know, this would focus it, and I was really, um, I just thought no, um, and then I started researching menopause, and I just went into shock about all I didn't know about my own body. The information gaps around women, even now, yeah, just unbelievable. And the whole history of it, that classically, Western medicine, had, it, it took the male body as the default body, and all the research is done around the male systems, but females are entirely different. Our whole hormonal situation, and our, you know, I, I go through facts like, in Ireland, for instance, one in four Irish women will die of heart disease or stroke. Sorry, bringing up that now. That women get twice the rate of dementia that men get and four times the rate of osteoporosis. And those three things in particular related to brains, bones and heart are co-related to the fall in estrogen that happens during the menopause. And that is very specific to a woman. And uh, why these things aren't known is unbelievable and then I've been touring this show all around Ireland for the last 20 months at this stage I'm going back to theatres now because there's just been such a huge response and I hear such heartbreaking stories from women like women in their late 70s early 80s now who maybe had a hysterectomy in their 50s and the doc they were on they were allowed HRT for a few years and I've had so many women say oh we were absolutely flying and then the doctor went and now you must come off it you can't stay on that that's you know bad for you it's not that's not even true it's not researched and then they really as we would say in Ireland failed you know they really the started suffering bone problems um, brain fog I've had so many women say that to me um, so uh, there's the, this undercurrent of I've seriousness. Yeah, Pardon? I've, I've researched HRT big time. I mean, I know yeah. about bioidenticals and oh, yeah. all of that. In America, the women get, you know, they get what they ask for. They, 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 they get measured what they require. But here, you can't get it. Oh, or it costs you £10,000 a year or something. But you just can't. Oh, well, it's beginning it's to get a little bit well, better I hope so. in yeah, yeah. Ireland. But I've yeah, had yeah. women tell me extraordinary things. One woman told me she went into a doctor and she said, right, I want a conversation about menopause and HRT. And he went, oh, sorry, I wouldn't know about that. That's women's stuff. <laughs> women's, a doctor saying that. And another woman said, the doctor said to her, um, you don't want this for vanity reasons, do you? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, oh yes, I just want my hair to stay thick and <laughs> I want to keep the boof on. <laughs> you know, as if that's all. Because that's another thing I discovered, Phil and Ross, oh, yeah. um, all the symptoms to do 
with menopause. We hear, we know the periods will stop and you'll have the odd hot flush. Yeah, yeah. But my God, there's so many other things. Like do, that, oh, yeah. do, do people think of um, the menopause still almost like a man's midlife crisis? It's a version of getting a Ferrari and a younger girlfriend. <laughs> I, you see, I think for women, it was just a hidden thing and women were, were kind of cast aside yeah, in the past. So, I look at There's so much shame about it, isn't there? There the was shame. so much shame. And I think, I'm in my 50s now, and I think women my age and former generations were just totally sidelined. And it was like, mm. exit stage left now, please. Absolutely. And so men could go and find a younger model or whatever, but women, their options just... You became Absolutely. a witch. You were the witchy thing in the corner. Or as I say in the show, um, you know, if you go back even further and you <laughs> you look at the medieval witch burnings, and millions oh of God, women yes. were murdered. You look, it was mainly menopausal women. It was like they were going, well, they're post-reproductive. They're beyond the tyranny of childbearing and all that caring. They've mm. got all this knowledge about life that connected to the earth. Should we just set fire to them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great idea. When you think about... <laughs> You think about in, in, Phil in just India. Said, you know, hey, stop the lights. Phil just said, great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but in India, you've got the widows' halls, haven't you? All the <gasps> widows, once you become a widow, well, in parts of India, yeah. at certain castes, you become a widow and they just lock you away in these halls. And you've or got to, or, all they, the women or they throw them on the yeah. suti. Yeah, the, yeah. The throw them on the bar. Yeah. 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 Apparently, it was to stop women poisoning their husbands. Right. <laughs> um, Phil, because the hot flushes, <laughs> the hot flushes are actually a surge of creative energy. We're actually so powerful when we go into the menopause, but it's all been suppressed. When you know we're not allowed to own our power. Ross, the men are getting afraid. <laughs> 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 Me and Ross are flaming here. You can't see it. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're levitating <laughs> as we're speaking. <laughs> Put your broom away. <laughs> If people can't wait for the show, what is the answer then to the question, how to, how to get to the menopause and enjoy it? Well, I think women enjoy it anyway, because women are great crack. And that's one thing I say in the show, you know, uh, this dour name, menopause. If it had been up to me, I would have called it something a bit fun, like wibbly wobbly wonders. But it means you know. <laughs> men owe pause. Yeah. Take yeah. a pause from them. No, take a pause from <laughs> men. Well. <laughs> Uh, Although I didn't take a pause from men, <laughs> thanks be to God no, for the no. man in my life who came up with the topic and no, I could keep my check. comedy career growing. <laughs> Isn't that what it's about? It's a funny show at the end of the day. It's a funny show. Can I please underline that point? It is an evening of entertainment with some information it's gonna be around brilliant. the menopause. It's gonna be and brilliant. it is appealing. And there's a young woman there behind the bar, Emma. And I have to say, it really appeals to your generation too. <laughs> Great so for Christ's sake, can you tell everybody to come? Has, has your comedy always revolved around serious themes? or The Newlers, no. The, well, my big thing was the Newlers. Like, I, I immigrated, I graduated college in Dublin. In I was born in Manchester, that's why I have a bit of an accent. But my mum lives back there now, but she's from Mayo. Actually, you were talking about it in the last interview. My mum is from... Uh, Car um, from Caramore, which is just outside Morrisk, which is the same area you were talking about. And actually, just when I was listening, can I say this? Yes. Th this story came to mind about Brian Keenan. Brian Keenan was talking about how reverentially everybody was treating him after he came out because he'd been through this awful trauma. And he said he absolutely loved it when he came back to Dublin he was appearing on some program and the taxi driver he got into the taxi and the taxi driver said I, I recognize you don't I and he went yeah I'm Brian Keenan and the taxi driver said would you be more comfortable traveling in the boot <laughs> <laughs> and he loved that it's just that is the Irish way that is the essence uh, isn't it yeah, you yeah, know, is so to is name the thing so and good. be humorous about it. Absolutely. And so, no, it hasn't always been serious. The, the Newlys was, um, was a trio of country girls who were superstars, as comfortable in our sequined wellies on the farm as getting a Concord somewhere. Um, and we started around the t same time as the Spice Girls. Yeah, I always remember a record company exec in Dublin looking at us and going, oh yeah, maybe we could take you on. We could call you All Spice. <laughs> <laughs> and we were only in our late 20s. But this is sexism. Oh, wow. Always, always, always the sexism. You're always too old. You're always tettering on being a has-been. 
So that's why I'm really enjoying doing the show now. Because believe it or not, can you believe it? I'm 57. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Phil. He's like, yeah, I can believe that. Yeah, yeah, I can believe <laughs> friend she was saying to me she has two daughters in their 20s and they're all the time going oh we hate the way men are always objectifying us we're always being objectified <laughs> by fellas we hate it she's thinking to herself jesus christ i'd love to be objectified i'd love to be walking past a building site and i fell i fell a staring down at me Hear an appreciative wolf whistle. Can, can you give me an appreciative wolf whistle? And just to hear somebody shout, show us your tits. And then she said she could just go. There they are. We've heard a lot recently in the news about what a brutal environment the comedy scene was for women, say, 30 years ago. You know, whether it's the Russell Brand end of things or whether it's the fact that there wasn't enough room. Panel shows, you know, you were lucky to get one woman on two two panels on one of those TV shows. How was that for you and has it got any better? Well, I started out in London, like I said, with two other women that I met along the way. And we would have first done stuff on the circuit in 1989. And we were a little trio of early 20s innocents just finding our way. And I always remember a really nice, mature comic. I can't remember. He was the same generation as Mark Steele, but I can't remember his name. But I always remember him saying, sitting us down and saying, listen, you know, you don't have to play every club. Maybe for what you do, jongleurs isn't the right place because that would be a very you know it could be very robust and he went so choose carefully where you're going to put your art it was like don't feel you have to work in every environment and then I started doing stand-up on my own and I remember particularly playing a place like the tunnel club yeah. Malcolm Hardy and he was beloved he did set up the open spot. There was all these guys who would sit in the front and they would just jeer you for the whole thing. And I got through it and you're putting yourself in that situation. I always remember as I walked off the stage, he got on stage and he went, yeah, she was all right. I'd F-U-C-K her. And I remember just turning around and shouting across the room, F-U-C-K, you. Because in my heart, I thought, no that this this offends my soul and you had you had every guy comic at the time will go that that is comedy and you just fit in with that but I just remember going it and and you had to work within that environment to if you wanted to be a comedian and suck it up and the women who did were ladsy and got on and there was there was brilliant women but I just knew in my heart I wasn't one of them and then it was such a dilemma because I was going I want to write and perform comedy where do I do it if I don't make it work here and then my break came was I eventually just I trained as an I got a scholarship and I trained as an actress in Alra in Wandsworth and and then I went back to Ireland and straight away I got a part on a telly show called the Jerry Ryan Tonight Show. And then the Nula started immediately out of that. And it, and it was like going, well, this is, this is your soul, this is your roots. And, but it's, it was finding those lessons the hard way. Um, but to me, um, it, it was a really tough environment. And I think that environment only really changed in the last 10 years. And now it's maybe... <laughs> I don't know. It's going kind of the other direction. There seems to be real, a censorial thing now and everybody's concerned with being right on or whatever. And I think a lot of men are secretly tiptoeing around going, yeah. you know, men are men at the end of the day and women are women and we are animals negotiating the being together. And I, I don't think you can completely kind of try and dampen down all of that and the volatile dynamic between human beings and the robustness of what goes on in the world there has to be a space to openly talk about provocative things and I, I'm shocked when I see like every year in the last few years there's been shows cancelled in Edinburgh like we would have gone to the Edinburgh Festival for years and years and years and you would have seen all sorts of stuff but it was kind of a fringe 
platform where people were finding out about how to express their ideas and what are they and how do they land in the world. And now there's this new Puritanism. It's like Mao's China. It's like you can say this, you have to work within this frame. And I'm telling you, people are being silencing themselves, censoring themselves, and it's a, it's a strange atmosphere at the moment. And I think it'll swing back the other way. I think it's just the, the cultural weather. And it's this, you know, which is why I'm glad that I'm able to tour my own show. And I, and I think the title is a call out to to the audience that I want to speak to and then at the, at the level I want to speak to and I don't have to be involved in this. Oh, I feel sorry for some people caught in that maelstrom. It's, it's, it's tough. It's a weird do, time. Do you, do you get many men at the show? Oh, I get a few. Uh, you know, I mean, it's always good if there's more than one because as I say, if there's, if there's two fellas in a go, you're in luck because usually if there's just <laughs> one man in, what we do at the end of the night is we sacrifice him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then, of course, look, Phil, the menopause is a very inclusive condition. You don't have to get it to suffer from it. <laughs> Just ask himself <laughs> over there. <laughs> well, it sounds like there's not going to be much self-censorship in how to get to the menopause and enjoy it. That's on here at the ICC in November. Um, thank you so much, Anne, for coming. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Thank That's you great. so much, Ross. Oh. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Condition. <laughs> you don't have to get it to suffer from it. <laughs> anyway, I decided I am going to go to the doctor. I don't feel myself, and I went along. I hadn't a clue what it was. Turns out, neither did he. <laughs> I swear to God, do you know something? He was so out of the loop that I, I'm surprised he didn't ask to hold my testicles and get me to go. <laughs> I said, Mum, I'm, uh, I'm thinking of HRT. And she said, What's wrong with the bank you're with? <laughs>